Hey, welcome back to Trekking with Velox 18. It's 5.30 in the morning. It's time to get this week started. We got a 7 a.m. pickup in Nashville, so we're warming the truck up. I backed it up onto the grass this time, so hopefully we'll have a better angle on getting out of that driveway that you can't even see. But uh, yeah, I think it's just about warmed up and uh, it's time to hit the road, man. So why don't we, uh, why don't we roll the music? Let's go! I left myself a good angle to pull off the grass here and get diagonal. I just gotta watch out for the for the mailbox on this side and then the drop off on that side and then you know cars coming. That's the other thing I gotta watch out for. the mailbox too good but oh there's a there's a pickup truck coming I'm gonna back up there we go now I can see the mailbox a little bit better. Turn, turn my utility lights on. the most difficult part of our drive just getting out of the driveway <laughs> both from a uh, you know a, a driving ability uh, standpoint and uh, an emotional standpoint toughest part of our drive right there leaving the driveway now it's all uh, it's all downhill from here all right we're uh, getting close to Nashville but Traffic is kind of slow down, speed up, slow down, speed up. It's not terrible traffic. Uh, if you've ever been to Nashville during rush hour, the traffic's not that bad. I mean, maybe it's just because, uh, you know, I was trucking around LA and the Bay Area and stuff for a long time. But uh, really, it's, uh, it's always kind of like, it, it stays moving pretty good. You hit a couple little merge points where you end up having to, you know, go slow. It, it gets a little slow and go, I would call it. Slow and go. But, uh, but even when even when you're, like, in the heart of rush hour, uh, you can usually get through okay. It'll add time to your drive for sure. There's, a, there, there's always traffic, but it's just not that bad. You know, like uh, like this morning when I left, my ETA to get to this place was 6:30, uh, and uh, now my ETA after kind of being in traffic for a little bit is 6:38. So it, it's added eight minutes onto my drive so far, and that's just. Uh, it's really not that bad for driving into a major city at 6.30 in the morning, you know, 6.15 in the morning. Uh, it's kind of, kind of just par for the course uh, anywhere in America. If there's a, a city that's a major, uh, major hub of business and, uh, you know, the, the size and uh, status of Nashville, uh, you, you tend to get traffic. A lot of people that live in the surrounding areas that gotta commute in. It's just the way it is. But we'll 
get over there shortly and uh, and uh, we'll get get checked in for our pickup. All right, I uh, I pulled up and uh, the security guard says uh, shipping don't open till 7 a.m. Sir, and I was like. Yeah, that's like in that's like in twenty minutes, and uh, and he goes, yeah. Um, I said, well, I have a I have a seven a.m. appointment, so I just didn't want to be late. And um, he goes, you sure you got a seven a.m. appointment? I'm like, that's what they told me. And uh, so he's like, all right. I said, I can't just come in and wait for them to open. Like, there's nowhere for me to be, or you know. And he was like. He was like, uh, what's your pickup number? He sounded real put out that like, maybe he goes home at seven and he didn't want to check in a truck. I don't know. But uh, we got here 20 minutes early and um, he sounded like he didn't, he didn't like my pickup number. He kind of made a face when I told him the pickup number. So we'll see if the pickup number is any good. <laughs> but uh, yeah. It should be fun, so we'll hang out for 15 minutes, wait for the shipping office to open, and then we'll uh, and then we'll uh, go check in. So, we'll just uh, hang out over here in Nashville and watch the sunrise. Not a bad way to start the day. Gotta get that brightness uh, just right to get the colors right, you know? Yeah, it doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna pick up the colors, but the colors are a little cooler than the way they look right there. Good morning, hopefully uh, they don't trip out that I'm using my camera on the premises. This is a place where you gotta wear like a hairnet when you go inside and stuff, so they might be strict. Might be strict, but anyway, let's go get checked in. All right, um, got checked in. Uh, it took a little bit, but um, it, it was a bad number. Not a bad number, but it's the customer's number, not the shipper's number. And so they were like, it's gotta start with a six or seven. I'm like, yeah, my number starts with a one. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he goes, all right, hold on, let me. So he went into his system and he had to look up the number. Obviously they have, the the receiver's number as well but that's not how they have anything listed like in their paperwork so he had to like go in he like went into a back room to look it up and then came back out and he goes all right you can back into door 10 i'm like cool i appreciate that because some places they're like nope we need our number you can't do anything unless you got our number but uh they they worked with me and used the number i had which was cool so uh we'll get it in it's actually the the closest dock to that side and uh I might back up a little bit just so I can get a better angle. It's all about the angles, baby. All right, um, yeah, get in the dock, get, let's get loaded, get the heck out of here. All right, we got loaded up. It is now 8.30. And uh, the first stop is completed. We just need to come check out over here at the guard shack and we'll be on our way. I think we'll just head up 65 to get to, uh, man, this, this is kind of tight with this guy here in this dock. Feels dumb.
gave me the thumbs up. We're good to go. He checked the seal. Man, we are just squeezing through here. This is a very tight exit. down the road and like I said we'll probably just head straight up Interstate 65 through Indiana uh, you know Kentucky and then Indiana and we'll, it'll be a pretty uh, pretty easy day of trucking probably stay I don't know we'll stay somewhere in Indiana um, forget where there was a truck stop in uh, and it kind of, it kind of uh, keeps me probably a couple hours outside of Chicago, but um, I don't think I want to get too far north up there and then have to figure out somewhere to sleep. Uh, but we'll kind of play it by ear. We'll see. I don't, I don't know my way around up there too, too well, so. It's all kind of, uh, it's all new to me. I think that there's enough room for me to make this turn if I, if I go on the, you know, on the right hand shoulder right here past this guy. I think I can, I think it's a wide enough turn that I could make it, but I just, I've never taken it before, so I don't want to find out, find out halfway through that I, uh, I shouldn't have done that, so I'll just stay right here. But uh, anyway, yeah, we'll get headed down the road, uh, up Interstate 65, out of uh, Nashville, and take that all the way up into Indiana, all the way to Chicago, all the way to Interstate 94. So that's the plan. I'll uh, catch up with you guys down the road. side here's the truck I guess it's on the passenger side on this one I'm so confused all right this isn't like a red diesel right it doesn't say anything about being off-road diesel 
I don't know, it's kind of weird. I don't know why that side doesn't have uh, the, the setup, but it's over here on the passenger side. Super confused me though for a second. <laughs> I'm like, wait, did I pull in the wrong way? No, it's the only one that's like this. I don't get it, I don't know. Oh, well, we'll get some fuel and, uh, and uh, maybe take a half hour break here and then keep on trucking. All right, we're coming into uh, Louisville, and uh, looks like the number one lane is blocked up here. I think the uh, I think the ambulance is just trying to just trying to get through. I don't think they're I don't think they're headed up to the yeah. See, they're they're just trying to pass everybody. Uh, but yeah, number one lane's blocked up here, so we're just. Uh, chilling on our way through uh, Louisville getting a little slow down here getting a little slow down but uh yeah I decided um, where I'm gonna stop today there's a flying J uh, in uh, kind of northern Indiana and uh, it'll leave us a couple hours away uh, maybe an hour and a half two hours away from from Chicago uh, so that's kind of the plan right now is uh, is to go uh, is to go there dang they uh, their their front axle broke man you can see the wheel turned sideways even though the passenger side wheel is straight that's scary just driving along all of a sudden the axle brakes one of your steer tires is facing sideways dragging uh, anyway so um, yeah, so anyway, so we'll, we'll have an early morning tomorrow, but that just means we're gonna We should be able to get up there early enough today to get uh, To get through uh, to get some parking spots and stuff and uh, And then we should be able to get through Chicago tomorrow uh, We might have to wake up a little bit earlier than I'd like to uh, Just to make sure we don't get caught up in too much traffic, but you know, whatever We'll figure it out Ain't no thing. Ain't no thing but a chicken wing on a string in the middle of spring. Uh, all right. Keep on, keep on keeping on through Louisville here. You guys want to see the Louisville skyline? I don't know if I've shown you guys. Uh, I feel like I don't record too often when I go through Louisville. Uh, I go through semi-often, but I don't think I record too often when I go through here. It's... Uh, Kind of a cool little, cool little city, man. I like Louisville. Pretty sure uh, Mercer is headquartered up here, right? If I remember from watching Super Trucker Dan, pretty sure this is where their headquarters are. Mercer's a big truck trucking company. He runs a flatbed for them, but. I see a lot more uh, vans than I and I thought they were mainly flatbed because really I didn't hear of them until Super Trucker Dan so I just assumed they were mostly flatbed but I see a lot of dry vans out here from Mercer up and down these roads on the highways and byways <laughs> uh, there's that Louisville skyline and it's Louisville Right? You don't, it's not Louisville. It's definitely not Louisville. It's Louisville. You kind of, you kind of just run all the, all the, uh, the consonants and, and, uh, <laughs> and vowels together. All into one, uh, one, well, maybe it's like a two syllable word. Louisville. It's like Louisville. Right? That's how you do it. That's how you do it, folks. That's how you pronounce it, according to the locals. Local yokels. Pretty cool city. And then uh, we're just going to stay on 65 and go through the, uh, the toll bridge. I know there's a way to go where you can go... Uh, through town here and then 
get onto a different bridge that doesn't that you don't have to pay a toll on but last time we went across this it wasn't too expensive $14 or something like that and uh, you know it just doesn't seem like the uh, the prudent thing to do to uh, to try to go through a downtown area to get around the toll that just doesn't make much sense there was one time where I decided not to take the the downtown route and I ended up going like all the way around I probably drove 20 extra miles to get around and go to a different bridge and I was like man that was dumb that was dumb so we'll just go across this bridge right here this is interstate 65 going out of Louisville up in Indiana out of Kentucky into Indiana I mean so catch up with you guys when we get to the truck stop uh, just a few hours of driving up ahead of us it's not too long uh, we should get there before 4 p.m. so yeah shouldn't, shouldn't be a long day at all all right we're coming up to Dinwiddie Indiana Dinwiddie folks good old Dinwiddie uh, I, uh, I was just sitting here driving and I, I was thinking about, uh, it's weird, there's there's a guy on uh, YouTube or Instagram or somewhere I saw the advertisement and he's trying to raise private money for trucking and he's, the way he's advertising it is a little bit disingenuous because he, he's talking about, he's, he's telling people that, you know, you can have a fully, a, a fully passive investment you do nothing but really what he's talking about is he's raising private money uh, and it's it's not a it's not a terrible idea but basically he's doing like a I don't know is, is it a private equity fund but basically he's raising he's raising private money uh, and and the the point is you use other people's money right that's that's always the best way to, to do business other people's money OPM but He's trying to raise other people's money uh, because uh, equipment is so expensive in trucking, and so he's trying to raise raise money uh, because equipment's expensive. And then, uh, really, like the key to, to getting bigger, uh, uh, I don't know, contracts in trucking. Like the way that you get business is by having uh look at this tractor right here that's cool oh, here comes another one um having capacity the way that you get business and trucking is by being able to handle uh capacity for customers so c customers have have loads and um who, who they want to do business with is someone that can say, hey, when you have 100 loads, we can handle it. When you have, you know, uh, 15 loads, we can handle it. Like, no matter what, we'll be your, we'll be your, your, your go-to company. And uh, I don't know if I want Pilot or Flying J. I got, I got choices. I got choices. Pilot or Flying J. Uh, oh, I'm in the wrong, the wrong lane. Anyway, uh, 
So, I, uh, I, I think, I think it's cool, like, you know, raise money, whatever, and, um, but you should call it like a, like a private equity fund, I mean, I, I don't know what returns he's guaranteeing those people, um, I mean, to me, you're getting in a, in a ton of debt, um, you better have some, some, uh, some locked in, like, and when I mean, when I say locked in, I mean some locked in friggin' contracts or, you know, customers that are already ready to, to use you and pull the trigger. You just need the capacity. And I have a feeling that's probably what's happening. You know, they're, they probably have customers just saying, hey, as many trucks as you can get us, we, we'll, we'll keep busy. Um, and now they've just got to try to raise capital so that they can afford the dang you know, truck prices that are out here right now. So anyway, I thought it was an interesting little, uh, thought it was an interesting way to, to talk about trucking though. Cause at first I was just like, man, what a liar. He's just straight up lying to him, like a, a fully passive investment. And it's like, well, it's, I guess it's passive for, for the, uh, for the investor, but it's, it's a, it's a risky investment. Like I hope, I hope it's, you know, I hope they're being honest about it because it's it's not a uh, it's not a simple industry and it's and it's not um, like the market dynamics you know affect affect it so much and so if you're raising money you know you're raising money as a trucking company then you're probably oh this is a reserve reserve spots I uh, I thought I thought the other row was the reserve. I thought I could park here. Uh, go back around, I guess. Um, anyway, so so that was kind of. Uh, I just thought that was interesting, though the the way that you would explain it and say like a fully passive investment, and it's like I don't know. Um, like people, like I guess, just call it what it is, rather than trying to make it sound like. You can own a trucking company and we'll run it for you. It's like, no, what you're really trying to do is you're trying to raise private money and you should just call it a loan. Um, I guess I guess they're trying to flip the risk onto the the investor then, which you know is even more shady, right? But because uh, if it if it is that, if they're like, if it basically if, it, if it's what it sounds like, then they're asking you to to buy a trucking company or start a trucking company and then they'll run it for you and they'll dispatch it and they'll keep it keep it going with their you know with their connections to the freight and all of that uh, but that's that's risky I, I, I don't know who would want to do that but if it's like just like a private equity fund where you're kind of guaranteed a return then I don't know I guess I guess someone uh, would would want to roll the dice on that you just kind of gotta you just kind of gotta know that that you're gonna uh, you're gonna have issues and you better hope that those operators you know whoever whoever it actually is that's operating that business is uh, is good at it because trucking is a uh, is not a foolproof uh, business uh, at all it is it is a risky business especially when you're taking on debt like they are uh, you know it's gonna be it's gonna be a risky business so anyway I thought that was interesting uh, we're parked up right here uh, we'll close out the video right now all right um, I was gonna go outside and record like the outro and be like, hey, see you guys later, whatever, uh, with the truck in the background, because you know the truck's the main character, uh, at least for now. Uh, first $240,000 takes it. But uh, it's super windy outside, and um, and uh, yeah, so I don't wanna blow your guys' eardrums out. You know, that would be rude of me. Plus, I want you guys to come back t tomorrow and watch another video, so you guys need your eardrums. Um, <clears throat> I got a comment that was like, man, this guy's 
this guy seems greedy. Doesn't he know the used truck market is, uh, you know, has collapsed or something like that? And I'm like, I talked to a person on the phone who bought a truck with less miles than mine, but that isn't as custom as mine for right in the same neighborhood, $10,000 less than what I'm asking. Um, and he physically put a deposit down and purchased the truck. Like it's the actual purchaser of the truck. It's not the seller of the truck inflating the price that he sold it for. It's the purchaser of the truck saying, man, I wish I would have known you were going to sell your truck. I don't know if I would have bought it, but at least I could have considered it because I had just bought one literally days before I, you know, posted my truck for sale. So, um, anyway, so, uh, I'm not greedy. Uh, if I was greedy, maybe I would have sold it when it was worth like 300,000, 280 or whatever. And people were asking dumb, dumb prices for trucks like six months ago, eight months ago, and they were getting it. Um, but no, I'm, I mean, it's kind of just a, uh, uh, yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's just a business decision. Uh, it's not greed. Um, <laughs> I don't think anyone gets into trucking if they're greedy. Come on. Uh, but anyway, um, we did 477 miles today. Uh, we started down at the house, picked up in Nashville. We're stopped here in Dinwiddie, Indiana. We're going to run up 50 more miles into Chicago tomorrow morning. We got two more pickups tomorrow morning, 7 a.m. and noon, or no, two, 7 a.m. and then two. And then uh, our delivery in Janesville is the following morning on Wednesday morning at like 5 a.m., 4 a.m., something like that. And it's um, Janesville, Wisconsin, which is, is really, um, really not that far from Chicago. So we uh yeah we're we're looking we're looking uh we're looking good for tomorrow and uh, we just got 50 more miles to go to get into chicago and then we'll just do a little running around it's supposed to rain that's why it's windy outside there's like a storm coming this direction so that should be fun but uh yeah let, let me know uh what you guys think about that the the advertisements it, and let me know if you guys have seen them uh you know those those guys trying to raise money to um to start trucking businesses for people uh, let me know how you understood it the way they said it. Um, you know, if it's actually like, hey, you know, you buy the equipment, you set, you know, you put all the money in and take all the risk and then we'll just run it for you. It seems like like a sneaky way to for a dispatch company to find customers. Um, but or if it's just a way to kind of raise private private money to uh, to to invest. I don't know. I never clicked on it. Um you know, I guess, I guess the algorithm knows me well though. That, you know, I, I consume trucking content and then I also consume, you know, like business content and that kind of stuff. So I guess it, it assumed it knew me and knew that I would be interested, but as an, uh, you know, as a carrier, as a trucker, as an owner operator, when I hear someone say like trucking and passive, I'm like, <laughs> you know, that's, that's not true. That can't happen. That can't happen. But, um, anyway, let me know. Let me know uh, what you guys think down there in the comments. And uh, shoot, man, yeah, this is where we we'll wrap the video. Love you guys. Peace out. See you tomorrow. Ooh, two hundred forty thousand dollars, and you could drive this truck home. That's just two hundred forty thousand sodas out of a soda out of a vending machine. Just don't drink soda for the next two hundred forty thousand days. Boom. That's all you gotta do. Ha <laughs>